January 1, 2023, Sunday, 10.30 a.m. For the people of Northern California, this new year begins with a 5.4 magnitude earthquake. The concerning fact is that the earthquake struck the area for the second time in less than two weeks, causing damage and power outages. The earthquake's epicenter was located in Humboldt County, southeast of Rio del, about nine miles from the immediate region. According to the Humboldt County Sheriff's Office, there have been reports of home damage in the Rio del, while half of the city's residents were without power and around 30% were without water. Authorities said that restoration efforts were underway. December 20, 2022, just two weeks ago, at 2.30 a.m. in the morning, residents in Northern California really jolted awake by a 6.4 magnitude earthquake. It hit the same region of Humboldt County, whereas in Ferndale, which is roughly 200 miles north of San Francisco, more than 30 aftershocks were also detected. Two people died and 11 were injured. Thousands were left in the dark. Earthquakes are not new to the Californians. Even Los Angeles is called the most dangerous city in the United States in terms of earthquakes. Hard to believe that California has some 37,000 quakes every year, about 100 per day. Since most of them are magnitude under 4, people do not feel them. Earthquakes occur in California because there are faults beneath the surface of this beautiful state. Faults are places where two tectonic plates collide. North American plates are being horizontally scraped by the Pacific plate as it moves northwest at a rate of around 50 mm or 2 inches per year. This constant pressure causes stress and when the stress is removed, energy is released, causing movements that are known as earthquake. There are so many faults under the surface of California, but the significant one is San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault is the primary feature of the system and the longest fault in California. It runs across Los Angeles County on the northern side of the San Gabriel Mountains. The reason why it is so significant is that it can cause powerful earthquakes as big as magnitude 8. There are more earthquakes in California than have been recorded. The earliest known California earthquake was documented in 1769 by the Spanish explorers and Catholic missionaries of the Portola expedition as they traveled northward from San Diego along the Santa Ana River near the present site of Los Angeles. After that, many devastating earthquake was documented, but according to seismologist Charles Richer, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake forced the U.S. government to acknowledge the issue. No agency was specifically focused on researching earthquake activity before 1906 earthquake, when the Coast and the Geodetic Survey was made responsible. The outlook improved when Professor Andrew Lawson, along with seismologists Harry Wood, brought the state's first monitoring program at the University of California, Berkeley in 1910. In the 1920s, seismologist Harry Wood played a key role in opening the Caltech Seismological Laboratory in Pasadena. In this video, we will discuss the most significant earthquakes that played key roles in developing scientific research progress. January 9, 1857 If we date it back, the biggest known earthquake in Southern California occurred on that day at about 8.20 a.m. It was named Fort Tejan Earthquake, which had an estimated moment magnitude of 7.9. It ruptured the southern part of San Andres Fault for a length of about 225 miles between Parkfield and Wrightwood. But because the area was so sparsely populated in the time, only two deaths were recorded due to the collapse of some structures. In Ventura, the roof of Mission San Buenaventura collapsed, the front wall of old Adobe Mission Santa Cruz Chapel broke and the bell tower was damaged. There were a series of aftershocks that continued for at least nearly four years. Some of them were even greater than magnitude 6. March 10, 1933 
The Long Beach earthquake was one of the most significant quakes in world's history. Los Angeles has never seen an earthquake like that. Around that time, the population of Los Angeles was approximately 1.2 million. The earthquake occurred at 5.55 p.m. in the evening and had a 6.4 magnitude on the Newport Inglewood fault zone. The quake itself lasted 5 seconds with about 10 seconds of ground shaking. 120 deaths were reported as people were hit by falling debris while rushing out of buildings. This footage of a WC Field movie, which was being filmed that day, is the only real-time recording made of the event. The quake caused $50 million in property damage, much of it to structures made of unreinforced masonry, such as school buildings. Although, fortunately, children weren't killed by hundreds. Parents were so freaked out by this that they successfully petitioned the state legislature to pass the world's first building codes. The law mandated that school buildings must be earthquake resistant. Another bill, known as the Riley Act, was passed on May 27, 1933, which required that all of the buildings in California must follow the safety precautions for earthquake. Following this Long Beach earthquake, there was a long period of seismic quiet in Los Angeles. Almost 40 years of nothing, no big earthquakes. Interestingly, that coincides with when Los Angeles really exploded in population. However, in 1971, Southern California residents were reminded again that they live in an earthquake zone. February 9, 1971 At 6 a.m. in the morning, a 6.7 magnitude earthquake occurred on the San Fernando Fault Zone in the foothills of San Gabriel Mountains in Southern California. It is also known as 1971 Silmar earthquake. It was caused by a reverse fault, a type of thrust fault that has an extremely high angle of vertical movement. The ground shaking lasted about 12 seconds as recorded by seismometer. 65 people were killed and more than half a billion dollar of property damage occurred. The Olive View Hospital collapsed, killed three patients and a hospital worker. At the VA Hospital in San Fernando, 49 people died. However, the earthquake gave authority a wake-up call regarding a specific type of construction. The Olive View Hospital, where the first floor disappeared, was one of many non-ductile reinforced concrete buildings. Non-ductile is a technical term for brittle. The last type of structure engineers would want to be located in an earthquake-prone area. At the time of the Silmar earthquake, it was widely believed that the Field and Riley Act were sufficient protection against it, but there were many pre-existing brick buildings that were vulnerable. After the earthquake, the California legislature enacted the Elquist Priolo Bill which required the mapping of active fault zones. Whenever the faults are found, they are integrated into seismic hazard maps. Builders and homeowners are by law compelled to review these maps in order to be aware of potential risks. Even though the Los Angeles area had suffered through two major earthquakes, it continued to experience massive population growth. Surprisingly, by 1987, there were 3.3 million people in the city and millions more in the surrounding areas. October 1, 1987, at 7.42 a.m. in the morning, again the Los Angeles area experienced a magnitude 5.9 earthquake, known as the Whittier Narrows earthquake. It occurred on a blind thrust fault some 16 miles east of downtown Los Angeles. The violent shaking lasted 4 to 5 seconds. Three days later, a magnitude 5.2 aftershock caused additional damage to the areas. Total 8 people died. About $358 million in property damage resulted. Throughout Los Angeles, Orange and Ventura counties, 123 homes and 1,347 apartments were destroyed and an additional 513 homes and 2,040 apartments were damaged. Transportation systems were disrupted due to the minor damage in freeways and bridges. However, the earthquake once again brought safety and preparation deficiencies to forefront. Seismologists and policymakers became aware of blind thrust falls as a result of this earthquake.
January 17, 1994, the Martin Luther King Jr. Day. The heavily populated area of Northridge, California witnessed a strong earthquake of magnitude 6.7 at 4.30 a.m. in the morning. The earthquake only lasted for 15 seconds, but it was so strong that Las Vegas, Nevada could feel it. Some infrastructures were damaged so badly that those were beyond repair. Houses, apartments, shopping malls, freeways, hospital buildings, and countless other buildings collapsed within that 15 seconds. 57 people were killed, 9,000 were injured. Many of those affected areas were out of power and running water at least for three days. The authority said the earthquake caused collectively around $50 billion of damage, which makes it one of the most expensive disasters of the United States. Although the epicenter was a town called Reseda, the neighboring town, Northridge, got the most of the damage. That's why the event got the name as Northridge Earthquake. Although magnitude 6.7 earthquake is not uncommon to California people, then why is this earthquake so significant in United States history? The answer lies not only on the amount of damage it costs the city, but also on the discovery of a fault called Northridge Thrust, which nobody knew before the earthquake happened. In addition, the misconception about steel structures added more damage to the city. Before this happened, it was strongly believed that steel is completely earthquake resistant, as it would bend, not break, during an earthquake. That's why more funding was provided to build steel structures in California. But the truth came out just the opposite. Over 200 of such structures were cracked or had some fractures in connections. But thankfully, no fatalities occurred and no building collapsed completely. But due to these design flaws, California had to suffer huge economic downturn. Billions of dollars were used to repair those damaged structures and buildings and also on research to develop new engineering codes for earthquakes. There is no doubt that all those precautionary measures and research developments have played a major role in reducing casualties and property damage from the 2022 and 2023 earthquakes. However, a significant earthquake is due in Pacific Northwest. These extremely spectacular occurrences have occurred in the past and will occur again. In fact, it's actually been centuries since the U.S. last experienced a truly big one, an earthquake with a magnitude greater than 8. The most recent one to be recorded had a magnitude of 9, and it occurred in 1700. So what caused that big of an earthquake? The biggest earthquakes in the world are along subduction zone boundaries and those are places where one tectonic plate is diving down underneath another one. Clues about the earthquake and a tsunami of 1700 can be found in these eerie looking ghost forests. An earthquake and tsunami even could have a much bigger impact today than it did in 1700. The geologic record tells us that there are large earthquakes along the boundary about every 300 to 500 years which means California could be getting close to another big one. Although the people of California tries not to think about this kind of worst-case scenario, scientists are dead serious about it. A big earthquake like 1700 or even a magnitude 7 or more will destroy countless lives, properties, businesses and cripple the state's economy. Seismologists, however, have been turned to NASA for help. Incredibly, the geology of earthquakes can be studied from outer space. With the combination of in-SAR measurements and GPS measurements, scientists have concluded that the land surface of Los Angeles is being squeezed at a rate of 0.2 inches per year. Although seismologists are using multiple technologies to locate the faults, they are still unaware of the timing of future earthquakes. It is the only natural disaster which cannot be dragged down before it happens. Unfortunately, all we know for sure is that another one is coming at any time.